In this video, I want to take a look at one way that we can find the exact value for the sine of 54 degrees. Now, there's lots of ways to do this, uh, geometric ways and algebraic ways. I'm going to go ahead and take an algebraic approach in this case. So, we're looking for the sine of 54 degrees. So, I'm going to start by saying x equals 54 degrees. Okay, well, if x is 54 degrees, then I can say 5 times x is the same as 5 times 54, which is 270 degrees. And then the next step, I'm going to go ahead and break this 5x down into a 2x plus a 3x, and that's going to equal 270 degrees. And finally, I'm going to solve for this 2x by subtracting 3x from both sides. Okay, so 2x equals 270 degrees minus 3x. And what I can do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and take the sine of both sides of this equation. Okay? And now I have a really nice looking equation. It's going to be a trig equation. And whenever I can solve for sine of x, since x is 54 degrees, I'll be solving for the sine of 54 degrees. So I have a couple of trig identities here that I can use to expand these uh, expressions on either side of the equation. This first one is the double angle for sine, and I can rewrite that as 2 times sine x uh, times cosine x. And then on the right side, it looks like I have the difference formula or the difference identity for sine. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that. So it's going to be the sine of 270 degrees times the cosine of 3x minus the sine of 3x times the cosine of 270 degrees, okay? Well, some nice things are going to happen here because the cosine of 270 is 0, so it actually makes that entire part of the expression just 0 out. So really, I'm only left with this, and actually the sine of 270 degrees is negative 1. So I can rewrite this entire thing as 2 sine x cosine x equals negative cosine of 3x. Okay, well that took care of a lot of stuff right here. It actually made this look a lot nicer. So let's go ahead and use the triple angle identity for cosine and kind of expand this. So we have 2 sine x times cosine x, and it'll be the negative or the opposite of, and the triple angle identity for cosine is going to be 4 cosine cubed x minus 3 cosine x, okay? And so let's go ahead and distribute that negative through there. So I have still this left side is the same. And on the right side, negative 4 cosine cubed x plus 3 cosine x. Well, okie dokie. So it looks like I've got a lot of cosines here, but I kind of don't like the cosines. So I want everything to be in terms of sine. So I'm going to make a few adjustments here. First of all, I'm going to get all of my terms on the left side of the equation so I can have it equal to zero. And also I chose the left side because it looks like cosine cubed is the highest uh, power and I want him to have a coefficient that's positive. So let's go ahead and rewrite this whole thing. So 4 cosine cubed x, he's positive on the left side, plus 2 sine x cosine x, that was already on the left side, and then minus 3 cosine x. And that's going to equal zero. Okay, so it looks like every single term has a cosine. So let's go ahead and factor that cosine out. And I'm left with 4 cosine squared x plus 2 sine x minus 3. Well, this almost looks quadratic in nature, except this is a cosine squared and that's a sine. So let's go ahead and use a Pythagorean identity and go ahead and exchange this cosine squared for a 1 minus sine squared. Okay, and then when we distribute that 4 through there, we have the cosine out front. 4 times 1 is 4, and then we have minus 3, so ultimately that's going to be a plus 1 here at the end. 
and we have negative 4 sine squared x plus 2 sine x plus 1. And the last thing I'm going to do, I don't like this uh, leading negative here, so I could factor that negative out and just put them out there with a cosine x that's already there. So 4 sine squared x minus 2 sine x minus 1 whenever I factor that negative out. So it looks like we have kind of some factored form where I have this factor times this factor equals 0. So what I can do is go ahead and set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Well, this negative cosine x equals 0 really isn't going to give me anything that I'm interested in, so we're going to ignore him. But we do have this equation right there that is quadratic in nature. So let's go ahead and make a quick substitution. We're going to say u equals the sine of x. Remember that x is 54 degrees, and that's kind of what we're looking for. So this will be the sine of 54, and we're saying that's u. So if we're able to solve for u, we'll be solving for the sine of 54 degrees. Okay, well since this is going to be quadratic in nature, after we make this substitution here, let's go ahead and use our quadratic formula. So we have our values for a, b, and c. So a, b, c. So it's going to be the opposite of b, so positive 2 plus or minus, and we have b squared, so 4 minus 4ac all over twice a. It's not just a matter of substituting those values in. So we have 2 plus or minus. 4 times 4 is 16. The two negatives here make positive. So 4 plus 16 will be the square root of 20 all over 8. And the square root of 20 can actually simplify nicely to 2 times the square root of 5. And then I have a 2, a 2, and an 8, so I can factor and cancel a 2 out of everything, which will leave me 1, 1, and 4. So it looks like 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 4. Well, the problem is I have two values here. It's 1 plus the square root of 5 over 4 and 1 minus the square root of 5 over 4. Well, since we're looking for the sine of 54 degrees, we know that that's in the first quadrant and sine is going to be positive. So I need to use the one that's going to ensure that we have a positive answer. Well, 1 net minus here, the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 5 is bigger than 1, so if I subtract, then I'm going to have a negative. So I don't want to subtract, I want to add. Okay, so all in all, so that equals u, so that means the sine of 54, this exact value, is going to be 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 4. Okay, so I'm going to push that over here for a second, and I'm going to grab a handy dandy calculator, and let's go ahead and um, clear out that, and go ahead and find and see if this is right. So shift sine, that'll give me my inverse sine of this ratio. I'm going to see if it comes out to be 54 degrees. So we have a numerator, which is 1 plus the square root of 5. And then we're going to divide that by the denominator, which is 4. And then we're going to hit enter, and I get ah, 54 degrees. So it does appear that the sine of 54, the exact value will be 1 plus the square root of 5, all over 4.